louder with Crowder. I done pushed the beds together. Now why would you go and do a stupid thing like that? I thought we could cuddle. Cuddle? Think I won't get up and bed next to you with them cold feet thanks to your lack of circulation from your varicose veins? You're out of your mind. Just quit, quit bothering me, Josephine. What's wrong, Cole? Why are you so stressed? I've been working all damn day. I'm trying to unwind with my mud club watching a lot of Crowder. And you keep interrupting it. That's why I'm stressed. Thank you for asking, Josephine. I hope I've clarified that shit. You haven't worked one minute today, Colton. I got a check, didn't I? I don't count. You just got it from the mailbox. That's right. I'm on disability for the pain I feel every damn day. A, my plantar fasciitis, and B, it's when I'm going to check me married to you. Join Mug Club today for $89 annually or try it mugless for $9 a month. You can sign up at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club for the entire catalog, including Nick DiPaolo, Brian Callen, the Hodge Twins, Mr. Guns and Gear, and of course, Alex Jones, along with 100% more of this show. Even the shit like you post, I don't know. I got all kinds of shit. Well, actually, that was from my manager. It was a brawl in some deli in New York, a bodega, and it was these young yeah. black kids just tearing up the deli, and there was a thing of bananas on the counter that never get touched. I just put that up there. Okay, imagine the bananas again. You, you know, my manager yanked it down. My wife, and, and she started to fucking pack up, got a U-Haul. I said, you <laughs> No. He's the OG. He has his own show here in Mug Club, uh, Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern, Nick DiPaolo. called a pre-sip uh, thing. It happens. It's like with wine. You know, they aerate. They aerate oh, the wine. yeah, in your mouth. They do it so that they can, that way they can taste all the tannins and, the, and look like an affected prick. So I did that. <laughs> hey, it works. Right now, yeah. Um, look, today is a full house. Today's theme is about uh, not only replatforming, but providing a platform to those who have been persecuted politically. And I don't just say that. It's not just my opinion. Let's bring up the rundown. We have Alex Jones on the show, some recent hidden camera footage from uh, Sound Investigations. As we now know definitively that the American government, the F FBI, CIA, three-letter agencies were going after Alex Jones to bankrupt him, even though he didn't actually do what he was accused of doing. They admit it on camera. Then we have Paulo Figueiredo on the show. He is a journalist from Brazil, and we have an update on Elon Musk in Brazil, but specifically the corruption with the Supreme Court gear going on there. One guy who went after a magazine that was critical of the government, and then after that, he decided to remove people from social media. Uh, after that, went uh, to Elon Musk, asking him to remove other accounts. Had this man's bank accounts frozen, social media, where he was deplatformed, and even had his passport revoked. This has happened in Brazil. It traces back to one guy. We're living under a rule of fascism, and I just, I don't... I don't know if the United States has the moral high ground. That's my question for you today. Does the United States have the moral high ground like we used to? When you see what we're doing here, I think it's the greatest country in the world, but we might have missed a step. So we'll be talking about that. If at any point today, I would imagine this could happen. You'll see this on YouTube. Head on over to Rumble, which is uh, one of the few places that actually allows people to speak freely. It's a live show. Weekdays, 10 a.m. Eastern. So uh, all that and more, but uh, it's kind of a, it's a theme show. Guests, and let them know you love them. Comment below because they could use your support. Replacing Captain Morgan, CEO, because he just had a child. He's not with child anymore. Is uh, in second chair, Mr. Do we have his? Yeah. What happened? All right. Hey. April 16th, he's going to be at the Addison Improv uh, in Texas. Jay Firestein for the other dates. One of my favorite clubs in the country. A lot of fun. Good people there. How are you doing, Josh? Good. I'm excited to be there. Um, smooth as a baby's bottom. Yes, my face is naked. I feel, yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, I don't know, like I'm a woman without makeup and fake eyelashes and lip filler. And... Well, you're a woman without those <laughs> things or you're a woman with those things? I, I never feel like a woman, actually. I want to take that back. Yeah. I, Shania Twain feels like a woman when she wears men's shirts. I never understood that song. 
<laughs> she does wear Why is that in the lyrics? Short skirts, men's shirts. I'm like, well, huh. this is well, a song about being a woman. She's trying to convince us. Mm. I don't I'm, know. I'm not convinced. It wouldn't be my go-to. Canadians are tricky. You or to say, that. I feel like a man, and then say, satin panties. Mm. <laughs> in third chair, you know him, you can watch him here on Mug Club, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. He's going to be in Red Bank, New Jersey, May 11th. The funniest man alive. You can see all of his dates at nickdip.com. Mr. DiPaolo, how are you? Very good, sir. How are you? And I like to take that shirt off, Shania. Hey, now. I could feel like a woman again, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to, I'd like to switch up your wardrobe because you're full Canadian tuxedo Well, today. for Christ's sake, I'm sitting down. Oh, you can see my I jeans. know. I know. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be the shot from here up. I know. I get hit on by two gay guys at a bus stop on the way here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was also the leather hat. Didn't well, help. Oh, well, from Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Alex Jones and uh, Paulo Figueiredo, which, by the way, is like John Smith in Brazil. Paulo, very common name, <laughs> Figueiredo. I know uh, Silva. I know like 15 Silvas. I know every fighter in the UFC, whether you're watching early prelims, prelims, there's at least 11 Silvas. Yeah, there's a bunch of Silvas. Quite a few Figueiredos, but a lot of Silvas. M that's harsh. You're going to see. No, it's not. Harsh, my <laughs> ass. You're, un <laughs> you're understating it. <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee, Democratic Congresswoman, she uh, big, told... Bitch. School children, and here's the thing, there are multiple <laughs> failure points when she describes the moon to children that she didn't need to insert, but she chose to. Everything is wrong, and it's not a misspeak, it's ongoing. Sometimes you've heard the word full moon, and sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle. Which is made up mostly of gases. <laughs> Yay why? for affirmative gases. Answers. The question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? That's made of gas. The gas is such that we could do that. <laughs> the sun is a mighty powerful. Oh heat. my god. It is almost impossible. Almost. To go near the sun. Almost. The almost. The moon is more manageable. <laughs> yes, because and it's gas. Oh my god. In a moment, or not a moment, you'll see in a couple of years that NASA is going back to the moon. They're going back to the moon, but right now, it's got a rocket in its eye. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. It's, it's, it's hard to get, it, you, it's almost difficult to get too close to the sun. No, 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 Sheila Jackson Lee. If you get within three miles of the sun, this happens. <laughs> Sheila Jackson lied to me. <laughs> My point is don't, don't use her advice. Now look, she, she just went out there. And said, you know what, let me um, create an entire backstory and describe that which the moon is not. It's almost as though that was her mission. It's made of gas, which is going to be hard for us to walk on it. Is I mean, it, it, we can do it, but we got to figure it out. And then the sun is almost as hot as the moon. We can, we can now officially confirm that the moon is not made of cheese. It's not made of cheese. I thought, <laughs> the worst part is the guy behind him. Let's watch this again and watch the guy. He's like, yes, made of gas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learn something new every day. I thought he was going to smack her. You've heard the word full what? moon. And sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, which is made up mostly of gases. Love is a circle. No, that's Joy Behar. The question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? Uh, the gas is such that we could do that. <laughs> that oh my such God. The sun is a mighty powerful heat. <laughs> yeah. he's a, not, not, like, yes, it is. Impossible. Finally, something we can all be on board with. Sun's hot. My brother has Down syndrome, and even on a nice hot day in Vegas where he lives, he's like, no, go outside. Too hot. Yeah, yes. Too hot. Sun is hot. And I'm like, yeah, you fucking nailed it. The sun is hot. Did she get her, her scientific research from Smash Mouth? <laughs> and here's the scary part. I don't know if you know, uh, Jackson Lee is a congresswoman from Houston. Where, um, I don't know if you know who resides in Houston. NASA! <laughs> NASA is in Houston. She and many of them will vote for her. <laughs> Good points she made. It's not inconsequential. And I've got to imagine that some won't because she's caused problems for them. Houston, we have a problem. Well, that explains it. <laughs> if you see him at a gasoline station <laughs> on the moon, That's get it. in their faces. I've been to the moon. That's like a million sick goes. <laughs> Exxon, <laughs> quick trip. What? Shale. It's made of gas, and it's like it's just 
No one around her. This is someone I've ta talked about this before. There, there aren't enough people around her going, you should shut up. I, <laughs> That's I don't believe in white supremacy. And she makes it very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Statements like that. And who's it? Maxine Waters? Is that her name? They're the same person James in James Brown? Yes, they're the same yeah. person in <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. Yeah. Oh, my God. Moon has had a gas. We're going to figure it out. I mean, it's not without its challenges to live on a ball of gas. It's it, almost like we fall through. <laughs> <laughs> such a racist country. She's a powerful woman. I know, I know. You gotta be dog styling me. Yes, such a racist country. She represents the workers of NASA. <laughs> Stupid <laughs> monkey. It just kept getting worse. But I watched it like, no, no. Okay, it's a misspeak. It's made of gas. Then she went on to, but we're still going. That's why it's almost hard to find out how we can live on it. I'm like, oh, this is not going to get better. Let's put her in charge of that project. Yes, yes. We'll Let's put her to started. sleep. The sun is a mighty heat. Yes. It's, a, it's mighty, a mighty heat. She just, it's like she was describing wings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wild Wings has a mighty heat. <laughs> It's you hot. The hot the Mild, flavor? hotter than mighty motherfucking heat. It's, it's hot. It's hotter than Asian thing. Not quite blazing. <laughs> but it's up there. So, coming up, I don't know. You could cut. I get that it's funny, but it's also terrifying. It is terrifying. It really is scary. And uh, you can hit the like button, of course, if you're watching on, on YouTube, wherever you are, because the algorithm does not want you to see uh, the Brazilian journalist who we're going to have on, Paulo Figueiredo or Alex Jones. Uh, we're going to be talking with them quite a bit today. All right. Have you been following the Alex Jones saga? I don't know if you guys have been. I did. I you sent me stuff to read last night. So yes, I, I'm following. He's a hero. He's he is uh, an absolute hero, an American treasure. He's I know I don't know him that well, but God damn it, he's the OG. Really, he is. He, he is uh, so there was an undercover report, sound investigations. Go and show them um, some love. They're doing some great work. This was is a that your guys? Uh, no, they're not our guys. Uh, no, we've we've worked with them, but um, they they had their hands on this, and this is beautiful, good, good stuff. The CIA Oof. contracting officer. I want to make sure I get these names right. Gavin Oblenis, actually uh, on camera, talked about how the agency operates and how it takes down voices that they don't like, um, and he basically talked about how they use these tactics against Alex Jones. The goal was to bankrupt him, and they just sort of get some people to do their bidding, and. He, I know that people have said this before, and you, it's easy to put some distance between yourself and someone like Alex because he's a character, uh, and he's, he's incredibly you know, passionate, and sometimes he gets some things wrong, but he's out there taking the hits, and they can do this to anyone. If they can do this to Alex Jones, if in Brazil they can do it to Figueiredo, of course, not only can they do it to you, they are doing it to many of you. Here's the other side of it. Alex Jones does have a platform, so he's one of the people you know about. You don't know about the guy who's an accountant where these tactics are used against them. Why? They're not a public figure. It happens all the time. Here's proof. This is the CIA. Uh, I want to make sure I have his title right because they could sue for that. Contracting officer Gavin Oblenis it's on Alex terrific. Jones. terrific, this guy. So they can entrap some of these pro-lifers into doing things that they don't do. Yeah. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. Who would be like a big influence that you're, influencer that you're after you? Like a, I don't know, like a, I don't even know these names, like a Fox News person or like a Tucker Carlson or like... Uh, oh, I'm sure he's a... Right. You always want the biggest and loudest. Like that, what was his name? The one that said the uh, uh, Sandy Hook didn't happen. Like Alex Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? Are you still after him? Yeah. Why? Because he's broke. He got found guilty and had to pay like $100 million. So what, why were you after him? We're not anymore. Just to get the money from him? Yeah. So with Alex Jones, mm -hmm. you were watching him long before anything ended up happening? Probably. It wasn't my office, but I mean, we would, have, we would have been well aware of what he was doing. And the goal with him was what? Just to bankrupt him? Oh, uh, pretty much. And we let the families do it. And the, what? We let the families do it. Were they encouraged to do that by the Bureau? Like, nudged? We don't encourage people. But like, we, we just say there's no federal statute being broken, but you do have the option for a civil, for a civil case, and it's a pretty good case, nice. in our opinion. So, oh, that makes so much sense. I have a cousin who's a lawyer, mm -hmm. so that's a lot of these cases, they're, they're kind of encouraged by the FBI? Yeah, like, there's nothing federally, federal law we can do, but civilly, 
we can go at them that way and chop his legs off. And they did. So the FBI was happy. We didn't care. We were like, oh. Basically, the citizens did your job. Yeah. Wow, so you can encourage a civil lawsuit. Not encourage. Educate. What can you do with people like Alex Jones now? Is he still out there? Yeah. He's still chirping. He can chirp. Are you still watching? Yeah. Why? He did what we wanted. Which was what? We took his money away. Uh, we shut him up for a while. You're never going to shut him up for anybody. How, well, unless you put him in prison. But again, he didn't do anything to go to prison. Being ignorant is not a crime, though it should. <laughs> it is. I mean, what, if you could bring a nudge. He, he did inside a riot, like Cheeto. I thought you said that there were FBI agents in the crowd at J6. There are. There always are when there's a big protest in D.C. Just in case it gets out of hand like that. They, but there, wasn't, there wasn't enough to turn that tie. I mean, I'm talking they maybe have a 20. You needed a thousand to get rid of that crowd. So they had like, tw oh, that was on just 20? Yeah, just to go through and there and see what I can hear, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. That, yeah, definitely. They needed a thousand at least. Wow. Well, see, that's also Capitol Police jurisdiction. They're in charge. So the FBI, Why they didn't have more on hand, I don't know. The Bureau didn't really want people knowing that they were in the crowd. Mm -hmm. so that would be overstepping their bounds. A little bit. Do people know that? Do, Why? Do people know that the Bureau was in the crowd? No, nope, and probably never will. Uh, do you know agents that were there? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. They the agency now. <laughs> they probably never will. New rules! <laughs> wow. Everyone knows. He, he thought that because, of course, they deplatform and arrest people who insinuate that there were agents in the crowd. We've had episodes removed uh, here on this channel. So what they do is they remove people who actually point out the truth, admit behind closed doors. Well, yeah, that's the truth. We just remove them, though. There's, there's no crime here. It's just, oh, we'll have people go after him civilly. Think about that, that there are federal. And he also said the exact same things that we have been saying as far as it was under the Capitol Police jurisdiction. And Nancy Pelosi refused to send more Capitol Police when they were requested. Everything we have been talking about is confirmed here. And that's why they targeted Alex Jones. That's why we have been targeted here. That's why you have governments, for example, in Brazil uh, removing creators. Rumble is no longer available in Brazil as they fight this uh, legally right now and they take it up. I don't, know, I don't know where they're going to take it because it's a corrupt court, but we'll figure it out. If you want to see the whole clip, go follow actually Sound Investigations on X at Sound Invest, uh, sorry, Sound Investig, I believe is their handle. We'll bring it up here for you guys and we'll have links in the description. Um, it's, I think the, the full video is, is eight plus minutes. And uh, I'm just getting word right now, I just heard this from Mission Control, that uh, Oh, I want to say Dennis O'Blenis. Gavin O'Blenis. Blenis, <laughs> Blenis Leary. His LinkedIn has now been removed. Mm. There's your before and after. Huh. Excellent. Think about that for a second. He just removed it. So, people have said sunlight is the best disinfectant, sometimes grain alcohol, but the principle remains, uh, yeah, they don't like this operating in the light. Now, I don't know if this is admissible. I don't know uh, how this plays out in uh, the appeals with these cases. I, I, I don't know. It certainly should be relevant when you're a private citizen up against some of the most powerful agencies who have a never-ending supply of federal funding and you have a target on your back. It seems that you should. They want to, they want to make Alex Jones seem like the big guy. Biggest lawsuit. Why? Because he's a multi-millionaire. This is the FBI and CIA. They are the bully. Alex Jones is a guy with a radio show and a podcast. They want Pravda. It seems this, this Oblenis guy, he, he just effectively committed career suicide. Oh, yeah, that reminds me, actually. Uh, last week, I did an audition for the uh, sequel of Wizard of Oz. I, want, I auditioned to be a munchkin. What, is that, what does that have to do with... Tim, roll it! Uh, send in the next audition for the munchkin. No, 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 get out. Go. Now. Yeah, I understand it was actually, it was a bird. There was no munchkin. What? No munchkin hung them. No, I refuse to believe that. Also not the best thing to lead with if it's not in the script. Alex Jones is going to join us uh, to discuss this and more. You can see his response at band.video. You can follow him on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. And of course, on Friday, his exclusive Mug Club show. Um, he has been taking a well-needed uh, break for a little bit. So you can go to mugclub.rumble.com and, uh, and, and sign up there. Um, we're excited to have him on. He's... 
one of those things, and I've talked about this in the past. Let me know when we do have Alex on. Uh, oh, also, I guess his. Uh, you just told me Ob- Oblenis's Facebook has been removed yep. too. Yep. Dennis Oblenis. So professionally, LinkedIn is gone. How about his grinder account? No, of course not. <laughs> he's, still, he's still grinding away. I'm, I'm willing to bet you that there are a lot of fake that guy, accounts. That guy made Liberace look like Ray Lewis. <laughs> also on his grinder, he plays the piano on a typewriter. <laughs> why, why was he so forthcoming? Who was interviewing him? Uh, a shirtless Ryan Reynolds? Or... <laughs> yeah, these. Yeah, but we did the trimming Capote. We arrest everybody. Mm, can I get some more cheese over here? And they all think they're so clever. That's the thing. What a pompous oh, big and Donald girl. Trump, Cheeto, I call him Cheeto because orange. See how I'm clever? No, oh. we see how you're horny and lonely. I like to kick him in the snatch. <laughs> Guys yeah. will literally say anything to get laid. Yes. And gay men. I know, to another guy. <laughs> gay men, they're the most decadent people in the world. I like them, but Jesus. Hey. It's, wait, do you like him? No, you like him, the gays. Yes. The not gays, him. Not yeah. this fellow. This guy's a little, uh, I don't feel good about the country when he worked for the FBI, CIA. Yeah. What are you saying, Nick? They can't do the job? Yes. Yeah, so anyways, go ahead. No, I agree with you. The <laughs> worst part about that whole, uh, <clears throat> that whole video yeah. is I own that shirt. Yeah, I know. Oh, you and yeah. 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 you, him, and Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> yes, yes. It's not the shirt's fault, to be clear. Yeah, you look yeah. like you should like be Jimmy Braddock, either working down in the docks or one of the village people when you pair it with the jeans. It could go either way. All right, I believe we have him on the line, the OG, the man who the is best. the uh, the bell of the ball. Let's bring him on, Alex Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you're not calling from your studio here today. Uh, can you see me and hear me, sir? Yes, sir. I can see you. I've been uh, watching and, and enjoying the uh, broadcast, and, and I'm, I'm in a hotel, uh, but I come back to Texas uh, today, uh, and so I uh, took a few days off uh, here with the family, but as you said, I'm going to be back busy putting out those Mug Club reports uh, just as soon as I get back, and it's uh, great to be here with you. No, well, well I wish, I, I mean, I wish, I don't know if these are joyful circumstances. It's not because of what you've been through, but it's always at least somewhat of a win as far as a small battle when the truth comes out. Let me ask you this. What was your reaction when you first saw that video? Was it mixed emotions? Because you know, and we know that you've been railroaded. Did you feel some kind of elation because there was confirmation or, or, or was it mostly just anger because you're seeing someone blatantly admit it? Well, uh, I actually heard about the, the video from you guys. I don't know if you know that. Uh, they've been trying to contact me for a week, and of course it was just going into a black hole. I have a great crew, but they don't check the tens of thousands of emails we get a day properly. I <laughs> don't know how they could. And then uh, one of your producers called and said, hey, they're trying to get a hold of you. Uh, and I, I knew who the group was of the folks that exposed Pornhub targeting children and also Planned Parenthood selling uh, you know, eight-and-a-half-month-old uh, aborted uh baby parts illegally. Yeah. So it's a very, very credible group that, that kind of split off Project Veritas, very similar to your investigative unit. Uh, and so I contacted him and I said, uh, and I went and checked and you know, saw that uh, Oblevis uh, was who he said he was, formerly with the FBI and then a contract manager uh, for the uh, CIA. That, that doesn't mean he's a contractor. He would just manage the contracts right. with their contractors. So it was like a technical guy. And I knew everything he was saying. I've been through it. And, and that's why I've talked about the SH thing, but I only like to say the name uh, because it, it's a tar baby. They've got this HBO show out that's total fiction. And they, they tried to rope me in to respond to that, you know, to sue me again. Mm-hmm. And so I've just tried to stay away from it. But the process of what happened, I knew right when Trump won, and suddenly they were having some days. Hundreds of articles a day, nightly news every night. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of articles over a two-year period. <clears throat> that it was a big PR firm and it was a government operation. They were having congressional hearings about how they wanted to take me off the air. They were saying I was a Russian agent. And so I was like, why are they saying I'm this, the SH guy when I barely ever hardly talked about it, just covered the Internet, doubting it? I wasn't the guy that first said that. I, I, I probably – they introduced 22 minutes uh, in court – of me, I hadn't talked about it before they sued me for for two years right. because I had already knew it was some kind of weird, you know, propaganda operation. And, and then after they had the two defaults and, and told the juries I was guilty and rigged those cases and had the HBO cameras in there and everything with the judge putting on makeup and all the rest of it, uh, the PR firms came out two years ago when they won the uh, rigged cases and, and said we've been running this the whole time. Right, uh, we didn't like Alex Jones, so we went and took what he said. Blew it all up in 2016, 17. They basically embellished it to the power of 10. 
and then built that straw man that I was currently sitting in both their houses and currently paying on graves. Never did any of that. No one ever did any of that. And this so man, by the way, on. this man, pretty he, he admitted that. He admitted that there was nothing that you had done that was criminal. That's what's so scary. He says, yeah, but we have other ways to damage him. Let's just bankrupt him. We've talked about this, right? There's, there are the courts, which obviously are corrupt very often. And then there's the court of public opinion where there's no accountability. And he was saying, we know, effectively, what I'm seeing is him saying, we know we can influence the courts through abusing the court of public opinion. So it's important now when you talk about HBO, you talk about these networks, for people to understand the FBI, the CIA, this administration – and these networks, along with big tech platforms, they're often one and the same. Did, let me ask you this, too. Did it surprise you uh, at all when he admitted that the FBI was there January 6th? It, because I know that when you were here, you said, look, January 6th, there were a bunch of people who were rabble rousers. It was a small minority of people, but it was enough that it was significant and they need to be charged with threat. You've been very consistent with that. Uh, but there were FBI agents present. He just confirmed it. Did that surprise you? I mean, it's a leading question, but... You know, it, it, it didn't surprise me. And when he said 20, that, that was probably just FBI agents. I mean, we know that there were some people that got into the heat of it and the police fired tear gas and then people broke in, but then the police opened the doors and brought everybody in and now little old ladies are getting six months in jail for just walking you know, through the velvet ropes. Right. But it, but it didn't surprise me, but it did surprise me that he would sit there and just openly talk to a camera and openly brag about all these activities that he's obviously inside the FBI and the CIA and they're discussing. So I know he's telling the truth because I experienced it and without getting into all the technicals, but it's very historic and very important. Yeah. The law firm out of uh, Connecticut that, that quarterbacked all this is a high level Democrat party law firm. Senator Blumenthal is heavily in, in, involved in it and his family. I'm going to leave it at that, but it's on record. The stolen valor guy that never went to Vietnam, but said he was a Marine Corps combat veteran and was never, he, he was actually uh, like a gopher at the Capitol for the Marines, <coughs> part of his quasi-draft dodging. The lead lawyer there is a former federal prosecutor whose specialty is putting Republicans in jail, including the governor of Connecticut, literally for supposedly taking like $4,000 know, bribe or something with, with, with no evidence. And so I was also sued by an FBI agent <clears throat> in that Sandy Hook case, never said his name, never showed a picture of him, didn't know who he was, so he sued me. The guy would never got harassed. He'd been on the stand. He got one phone call at his office after it happened to see if it was really FBI because he didn't have his you know, FBI uh, name on. He, his rifle was pointing up, you know, not down on his back. People thought this guy's not real. So that they called. I didn't know who he was. And he got $94 million. Under the law in Connecticut, you can't sue somebody for defamation if you didn't say their name. Right. Only said the name of one of the Sandy Hook people ever. And I admitted to that. And, I, and so, so... That was the reality, and so the FBI was in there the whole time. Uh, we know uh, because they bragged about it. Also, the Texas case yeah. uh, that they were giving all the discovery to the FBI, hoping to put me in prison. Uh, then, when I declared bankruptcy, the Justice Department is under the law; it's very rare <coughs> can come into a case and oversee it. And, and so they actually came into the case and in my depositions. They would have two federal agents right. literally staring at me while lawyers interrogated me, and they were in the news, oh, he's hiding hundreds of millions, he's going to prison, and then, of course, none of that was true. I mean, no. I'm not a big, I mean, I mean, folks, if anything, I'm not organized you know, at all when it comes to money and <laughs> well, stuff, and I, and, I, and I go to a CPA, they do my taxes, and right. out of this whole, then they sent the IRS in two years ago to audit me. Uh, well, it was actually yeah, two and a half years ago. It was a year-long audit. They tore the office apart. They were there dozens of times, and they said, "We this is very rare, but uh, you are owed four point two million dollars." Oh, and I, I have a copy of the cashier's check, and then I had to give that to the bankruptcy court that, that went into a black hole of lawyers. Well, let, let me ask you this because it gets sorry, it gets a little like you said, it gets a little complicated for people to understand. There's so many moving parts. Um, I do want to get to you know Elon Musk and the space uh, that you requesting a space there. Uh, by the way, people get a free month of Mug Club right now if they use the promo code Alex. Um, I know you're going to be back uh, here uh, in the continental United States. I don't know where you are, but I, I, I can guess. Let me ask you this, though. You do have a lawsuit planned yourself. Um, yes. Can, can you explain that to people so they understand what it is that you're... Yes, and, and, and Stephen, I apologize for going on and on, but, but I can, just, just let me just finish that last Go ahead, I'll get into that. My point is, Justice Department, IRS, uh, law firms... Uh, rig courts, 
who are not allowed to defend yourself. This is the cocktail they've used against Trump. It's the cocktail that they're now using against everybody. And, and absolutely, the only reason I want to sue them is to get my name back. I don't even want money, but I want to be able to call Oblevis in. I, I, I want to be able to call their other lawyers in. I want to be able to call in the PR firms because the mistake they made was run their mouth. I mean, the lawyers in Connecticut and Texas, and by the way, the Texas group's the same one suing Elon Musk, by the way, mm -hmm. they got at the courthouse steps when they won their cases. The judge had already found me guilty and then told the jury to find me guilty for a bunch of money. They said, our mission is to silence him. We don't want money. And that's now happening in the bankruptcy court where the judge is like, wait, the law says you can get money, but the law doesn't say you get to silence people. And so basically there's now findings about to be made public that they're dealing in bad faith. So that's some inside baseball. But, but yes, I, I, I've talked to several different civil rights law firms and I've, I've had four conversations with four law firms uh, since this just broke. Uh, uh, well, I was talking to them before it broke. So in the last week, yeah. uh, they just broke a day and a half ago. seems like a million years ago now. And so it's a big deal. You, you know, it's all God. Yeah. You're opening up the mouths of these evil people to then expose themselves. The Bible says the pit they dig for you, the pit they will fall into. And so absolutely, I, I don't like taking on the FBI and the CIA. But if somebody's on top of you, breaking your nose and punching your eyeballs out and, and gang raping you and running over you and backing over you, all you can do is fight back. That's why when I saw the targeting of you a few years ago, I called you. We're already friends then. And I said, listen, don't let it get to you. This is you're successful. You're one of the top talk show hosts. You're a populist. People love you. Do not, and I know you're smart, but you haven't been through a lot of this yet. You've been through some stuff. I said, you, I know the cut of this jib. I know the yeah. signature. This is 100% the Justice Department, the CIA. They create the narrative. They look at things. They go, we'll take this and we'll take that. And we'll make Alex Jones a guy that bullies kids and pees on graves. Exactly. And then we'll make Stephen Crowder this guy that, you know, literally uh, breaks women's necks and human sacrifices them. And, and it's just all made up, and then they just hype it and hype now it and to, 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 to take what you're known for, being smart and being funny and, you know, having a talented crew and, and, and reaching tens of millions of people. And, and now you're someone that, you know, we, murders children on the side of the highway. And, and, and so just you understand, this is what comes with the territory. The good news is it's backfiring now. And so when I talked to Elon for two and a half hours a few months ago, and I've since, you know, obviously talked to him a few other times, I'll leave it at that. He he really gets it now and understands that it was all a psyop. And, and, and so yes, I, I, there's a good chance I'll be doing a spaces uh, either Friday or Saturday. Oh, good. Uh, with him. I'd love for you to be involved, but that's that's hopefully in the works. You never know. Yeah. I was supposed to be on one with him, and we were talking to him uh, well, with Zero Hedge a few months ago, but he had basically a, a migraine headache. And I believe he was the guy who works 20 hours a day. Uh, and so th yeah, that's going on. And, and hopefully, I'm just throwing this out there. Hopefully Elon Musk uh, will bankroll a uh, lawsuit against the deep state because the same, because he's already bankrolled some other ones you know, for, for all the censorship and things, right. because the same people coming after him, uh, the very same law firms are the ones suing him. Right. Well, a couple of things I wanted to touch on here. F first off, if you could just give me a short answer on this, because then I do want to get to Elon Musk and some of the conservatives who haven't really stood yeah. in the line of fire like they should. Uh, I know you're talking about these lawsuits. I know you can't give you know too much information. But since you were discussing this with law firms beforehand, this new footage that's been revealed, uh, how did your lawyers respond? Did they say this definitely helps? Is it significant to them? Absolutely, because the fact that he's worked with DHS, FBI, and um, manages the technicals of ops. So, so he, right. he's the guy that's kind of like managing you know, the, the, the technical systems. Uh, well, he's an FBI agent. He's a CIA officer. He's got credibility, right? They're all a right. bunch of heroes and good guys. They don't lie. And so that's their narrative. Of course, it's not true, but but he's telling the truth here. Right. And so <laughs> definitely it, it, it's a major civil rights uh, issue, uh, cut and dry. You already have congressional hearings going on with weaponization. Yep. Marjorie Taylor Greene is now calling for uh, hearings on this, and uh, it, it's even going to be involved in, in the FISA uh, re-upping hearings. Uh, already, she's already announced that. Others have announced it. And so... This is really a breakthrough moment, him running his big fat mouth. Good. And so bare minimum, he's probably going to end up being called before Congress. What you so saw, yes, this is a big deal. You saw he just removed, we just found out this morning, he removed his, uh, or his LinkedIn was removed and his Facebook. So that means that he's running and tucking tail. I wanted to get to, I know that Elon Musk called this disturbing. He, he put that out on X and you asked him to do a space. Let me kind of tell you something, Alex, that really bothers me. Um, and I know you've had to deal with this. I know that uh, sound investigations, I, I know they were working on this. And I know that, you know, these kinds of things that, you know, they circulate before they're made public. And there are a lot of people and outlets 
who could have run with this, who could have supported it, and opted uh, not to. And I'll tell you this, this has happened to me. People have seen it publicly, but for every time they see it publicly, they don't see it privately. You know, for example, when I've been on uh, Pierce Morgan's show, every time he tries to get me to go on and denounce Alex Jones, and I just say, no, I'm not going to, you're not going to get me to say that I agree with everything that he says, but you're not going to get me to denounce him or condemn him. And, well, why? I said, cause, because he's my friend. Because he's my friend. He's a good man. He's, he's not, no one's perfect, and at least you, you are very transparent about it. But they always try and do that. And here's the thing. I've also had that in depositions. I've had that behind the scenes where the line of question, where you could not be less relevant. They go, and are you friends with Alex Jones? And every time I've had, I've just answered, yes. Yes, I am. And to, to, to be willing to take the risks that you do, and that a lot of people on Mug Club and people in independent media like uh, Mr. Figueredo, who's going to be on, that to me should be the rule, not the exception. So to see other conservatives out there go, well, yeah, this is wrong and it's railroading, but, you know, we just don't want to touch it because it's Alex Jones and he's his own thing. You've been experiencing that for a long time. I would imagine that's why places like Rumble and Elon Musk are significant, because you and I both know there are people who put on the team jersey publicly and uh, they don't take on the fights that are that are actually difficult and require a little bit of fortitude. Well, that's right. And this is a communist or totalitarian tactic where they'll pick one person to pick on at first, and then they'll say, oh, do you support this guy? Get everybody to turn against him or at least not support him. And then they move on to the next person. So that's wolves trying to cut you know, a sheep out of the herd or out of the flock so they can eat it. It's an absolute divide and conquer tactic. And it's pure crap. And... I have friends, when, I, when they do things I think are wrong, I'll say, yeah, I think they're off base. But bigger than that, people that I'm not friends with, when I see a synthetic attack, when I see the media, the corporate press all piling on, I, I mean, I know what it is. That's their only power now because they have almost no viewers. But they can still scare politicians, scare media, that you're going to be targeted if you talk to this person. Well, the reason they don't want people talking to Stephen Crowder or Alex Jones or ooh, Tucker Carlson or, is because we're popular and we're telling the truth and the organic population likes us and we have the big audiences. So the media is still, the corporate media, the dinosaur media still wants to be the gatekeepers. Right. And so all they're doing is gatekeeping and, and that's their last power. They have almost no viewers. It's a complete joke. And I found that the hit pieces only create more more support, and I'm not going to go into a long story, but just briefly, I, I'm here in Hawaii. It's already in the news. I'm here. Oh, okay, I was today. trying to keep it under wraps, but you just doxed yourself. No, no, go ahead. Just, <laughs> but even TMZ said, "Oh yeah, well, you know, we snapped a shot of him. Get nice tea, by the way, at the bar. I was done being good, and uh, people were coming over, shaking his hand, saying good job. I, and I'm not bragging. It's not about me. It's that it's that free was popular. If I was I was here in Hawaii. I like to come here every few years. I was here in Hawaii like five years ago, and I, I shook a lot of hands, but I got yelled at four or five times. I had a guy come over and step on my fingers when my hand was out of the hot tub and say, you know, want some punk? I had to call security. I have literally shook, which I don't mind doing, but I can barely even go to the grocery store or walk down the street or go to the beach. Sure. The police, the, the people at the hotels, almost everybody. I mean, I was at a grocery store yesterday and had like 25 people lined up when I'm in the line shaking my hand. Black, white, Asian, old, young, Hispanic, wow. all listeners. So yeah. so whatever the globalists have done, they've really, 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 really screwed up. Because these people aren't just like, hey, I like your show. They're like, hey, when are you coming back? You know, I've seen uh, you know, Owens do the show. He's great, but where are you? you know, yeah. I mean, oh, you're here in Hawaii. Yeah. And, and I've had a lot of people say, hey, man, we love Stephen Crowder. Literally, I mean, every day somebody at the gas station. I love Stephen Crowder. I love you on the show. We are the media. And, and but, 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 but if people aren't public figures like we are, they don't get that feedback, which is you know, cool to have anonymity. I'm like, oh, I'm famous. What I'm saying is they don't get to see how popular freedom is. So that's why the corporate media is after us, because they're a joke. They're discredited. They lied about WMDs on purpose. They they killed 500,000 Iraqi kids and said it was a good price to pay Madeline Albright. They're the ones letting fentanyl come in. They're the ones that's all over the border. It's Biden that let in 90-plus thousand little kids, Senate report that have come up missing, many of them in sex slavery and in factory slavery. We're not running factories with 12-year-olds. We're not sex slavery with 8-year-old girls being gang raped. I mean, we've done nothing. And so they go, oh, look, Stephen might have a crooked toenail. You know, we heard that. Or, you know, Alex Jones, it's, it's, it's a fraud and people get it. So the system is so discredited now that, that, that 
their attacks on us are nothing but an endorsement. Well, yeah. That's why they're so, yeah. Well, here's the one, well, well, two things. I do have a crooked toenail. You didn't need to reveal that publicly. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to pay $25 for milk there in Hawaii. The inflation is yeah. unreal. I'm, I'm like, what? It's a $9 loaf? This better be magic bread. And I get asked all the time, one of the most common questions I get asked is, so is Alex Jones really like that? And I hope you don't mind this. What I do is I, I have one of, because you know, you're, you're a busy man, so you often leave me like voice messages. So I have one where there's no personal information, but it's, He'll leave them for me like at 10 o'clock. And I was like, hey, Crowder, I'm sorry. I was, I was on the road. And, uh, you know, what happened is, I, I don't know, this happened. I was at a golf course and I, I, I was under par. But, uh, you know, and then the globalist. And I go, this is him. I go, this is him. He's the same guy all the time. And I say, like him or hate him, that is Alex Jones. But I will say this. The left is not affect. Their attacks don't work. The only effect that they have anymore, the only power they have, are quizlings on the right. In other words, if there's an attack piece in the New York Times or in the Washington Post, people inherently know, or NPR people know. The problem is when there's silence from conservatives or when conservatives go along with it because they say, not me, no true Scotsman. Speaking of globalists, though, I do want to, just so people understand the significance of the threat, you use the term globalist, um, it really is a global problem. Here is actually uh, Mr. Trudeau, Prime Minister, I don't want to say Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau in uh, Canadian Parliament talking about you to the government. Sorry, right clip. Here's the other clip. Speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did. He did absolutely nothing because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy. That's right away what they try and do. Like you said, divide and conquer. By the way, his dad is Fidel Castro, just to make it clear. In case you guys didn't know, or Liam Neeson, it could be either of those. I just want you to. I can't prove it, but I'll stand by it. Um, Alex Jones, uh, Nick DiPaolo is here, and he did have a question for you, if you, you can. Uh, First of all, thank you, Alex, for taking the slings and arrows and being the stand-up guy that you are. And this is only going to make you stronger the same way all the indictments yeah. with Trump and stuff. My question is, when Trump gets elected, uh, how are they going to? Um, how long is it going to take to uproot this cancerous deep state? I mean, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I mean, how long does it take to? He wants to clean house. I don't know. Do we th- think is he'll that do logistically it? Logistically possible. Yeah. Yeah. And will he do it? I, I, Trump is really a different man now. He's very hard. He's super informed. Before he was naive, he admits that to people like Roger Stone who talk to him every day. Uh, Trump really gets it now. Uh, before he thought, "I'm the new CEO. I'll bring in the power structure. They'll take my orders. We'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll make America great again." And now he understands that there really is a criminal deep state out to not just get him, but literally destroy America and dominate and control it and parlay our power into global domination. And so, if he is able to get in and get past all of the manipulation, which I think obviously a landslide's coming. Uh, they're going to have real trouble locking it. They're trying to keep them off balance with all these criminal cases and all these big fiascos uh, with the Supreme Court deciding if that continues on. And so we're in for very, very tough times, yeah. very, very serious times. Uh, you have to admire Trump for being the man in the arena. And uh, I, I, I stand with him, even though I don't agree with some of the things he does. Overall, he's trying to be the president. He was the president. And he's trying to represent the people as, as, as best as he sees fit. And so the, the attacks on Trump are attacks on the American people. And our right to you know, govern our nation. We take Trudeau. For those that don't know, it's a parliamentary system, so we got like twenty something percent of the vote. Right. But he's still in power by right. sharing power with the other uh, members of parliament. This is the guy who was asked, "What's your favorite you know, form of government?" He said, "Communist China's basic dictatorship. You can get stuff done." He's a guy that had a real SS officer, a real war criminal from Ukraine, a standing ovation. Yep. And so Pierre Polyvier, I'm, I'm like, hey, you know, this guy. You know, really has taken on the globalist. Of, wow, you know, Canada deserves somebody better than Trudeau. And they go, oh, look, you just got endorsed by Alex Jones. You're Alex Jones. And 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 Polyvier was smart enough to you know not go along with their thing. You know, you're right. I, I shouldn't be endorsed by him. And then they say, oh, see, but that's who you are. Right. You know, th- that's a trap to get you to say you're. You know, you you don't associate with somebody that likes you. And so it just Trudeau's a complete joke. He's trying to pass laws, as you know, to put people in jail for their speech. Well, well they already do that, but for long 
prison sentences. He, he's propped up the media with a, a, over a billion dollars up there. It's state run. Yeah, it's so, CBC. Yeah, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And Alex, I hate to, but we do have this uh, Brazilian journalist who's also experiencing, you know, very similar kind of uh, timeline to to what you are. And uh, for people watching, uh, you can go to uh, mu- uh, loudwithcarter.com slash mugclub or rumble dot mu- rumble dot com slash mugclub or rumble dot mugclub dot. What is the web? <laughs> I just there's so many. Just go to Loud with Carter, and if they enter in the promo code Alex, they'll get a month free. But where is the best place for people uh, to find you and support you, uh, Alex? Absolutely. Thank you, Alex. We really appreciate it, brother. This has been Alex Jones, everybody. And uh, this is the time before we bring on Mr. Figueredo, uh, which is like Smith in Brazil. Um, hit the like button or download the Rumble app if you can. That's actually the best way to not lose touch if you download the Rumble app and you'll get those notifications straight on your phone. We're at the point where we have to uh, uncouple ourselves uh, from from big tech because if you think for a second, I mean, we just talked about this with Donald Trump. You don't think that they're doing exactly what Donald Trump, what they're doing with him. There's someone behind closed doors saying, oh, there's nothing we can do criminally. It's not, but you know what? We can just bog him down. We can damage him going into the election. We can change the statute of limitations uh, on, uh, on uh, you know, sexual assault there in New York right in time for the, pro- we, we can do all of those things. We know we don't have anything. We'll just use the tools available to us so we can damage his reputation. This is what they do. They go, hey, Alex Jones, this is Alex Jones. They misrepresent him to you. And they go, so everyone remember, that's Alex Jones. Alex Jones pees in the graves of children, right? And then they say, now we're going to make everyone else guilty by association. So they're afraid to even support someone they know. And that's not something that we do here. That's why we've created Mug Club. You've experienced that in comedy. I know we're not going to name names, but you've had people call you up who say, you know, you really shouldn't say that, Nick. Your career would go further yeah. if you didn't. And you've not played. This is an entire room, an entire company of people who... Don't play well with others, but we play pretty well together. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how the people that side with the truth are considered people who don't play well with others. I know. That's the world we're living in. It's very, it's very weird. And what's funny is people like you and Alex, look, I'm not going to lie. Nick DiPaolo can be kind of prickly, but he shows up. He shows up on time. He's excited to do the work. Well, I'm white. He's professional. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's not always that's, the case, well, as that, you well know. I'm not all white. It's You're right. Arguable. It's arguable. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Me, Hitler? Go yeah. on. <laughs> they don't know yet. They don't know. Make it easy, fine stuff. on Friday. <laughs> no, but it, 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 it is. talk about my aunt like that. All I would, right. <laughs> I, I would rather deal with a thousand Nick DiPaolo's and a thousand Alex Jones than one passive aggressive who passes themselves off as conservative and isn't willing to, uh, you know, actually, actually stand in the pocket. And this brings us to what we're talking about, Elon Musk. Um, we discussed this yesterday. We have some updates, and we have uh, Mr. Figueredo coming on, Paulo Figueredo. Elon Musk and uh, the Brazilian Supreme Court Judge Alexandra de Mo- Is it Moraes? I hope I'm saying that correctly. De Moraes. De Moraes. Um, they have been going after the timeline here. The more we add it up, especially when you look at what's happened with Rumble, is alarming. And it's not about what the left does here. It's what the left would do if they were completely unfettered. You're kind of seeing that in Brazil right now, where Rumble is not even available in Brazil. And this man who's a journalist there uh, has had his passport revoked, his bank accounts frozen, he's been deplatformed, and it all can be traced back to the government. And and really one key uh, Supreme Court judge, uh, Marias. He he basically thinks he's this guy, the the megamind to take down Musk. It drives the point home, but it's childish. Lucky now, <laughs> just to give you an idea who this guy is, um, what did you say? I, That's uncanny. It is. It, it really is. It's a good yeah. call. The last guy looked like my left nut. <laughs> <laughs> Same color. Then that's a day. problem. You have a circulation <laughs> issue. That's why I'm sitting like this today. I, 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 what are you doing to it? I'm picturing like the old Chuck roast where they wrap it in that twine oh. <laughs> rope. Oh, oh boy, Al. <laughs> boy, Chuck Nick. roast. You know what I mean? They're, they don't do that butchers anymore where they wrap it in that like little like wicker twine oh, rope. yeah. And yeah. then it's like bulging. And they, yeah. It and looks like wear, Megamind. I wear that on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up a lot of people in the late 80s. So, right. so this Mariah's, uh, man, the, let me give you. Mariah's a, 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 I know, no, it's, no, it's no, right no. there. I was almost there. I know, go ahead. Um, right. He's currently serving two roles now in the Brazilian court system. So 2017, okay, um, he uh, was put, I believe, in the uh, Supreme Court there. Then there was a new court created. He's the president of the Electoral Court, okay? And he was appointed there just before the election of Lula, who, uh, you know, took out Bolsonaro, was a criminal before, but it got overturned by the Supreme Court. No corruption there. It's not like there's been a history of corruption in uh, the intelligence agencies or the police forces uh, or the Supreme Courts in Brazil. Hey, if you're watching from Brazil right now, tell me, if you're walking down the street and there's a gang member on one side and there's a member of your government on the other or a policeman, who do you trust? Which side of the street do you walk on? 
Trick question. Neither is good, but you probably take it with the gangbanger. Uh, <laughs> let's go through here. Um, and something else, I really have a question before I bring this man on. I know a lot of Brazilians. Uh, not one, not one. And there's, like I said, with one exception, who was a liberal journalist, is a fan of Lula. They all love Bolsonaro to a degree that you, you don't see with a lot of politicians. So you can comment below. Um, maybe I'm just, I get it. It could be an echo chamber. Let's go through this timeline here. This uh, Supreme, this, this Justice, Marias. 2019, okay. Uh, this uh, Supreme uh, Court Chief, sorry, Justice, not him, but issued an order allowing the court to open their own investigations. Okay. So they gave themselves permission to run investigations. Okay. The first order was given to Marias. And the first thing that Marias did was order a magazine to retract an article accusing the Chief Justice of corruption. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we're going to give ourselves the ability to investigate anybody. Okay, great. First order of business, we are going to order you to stop pointing out corruption. Think about that for a second. They're not even trying to hide it. What else has happened? This man, Marias, has arrested um, or ordered the arrest of eight businessmen uh, for WhatsApp messages. He's jailed people without trial for social media posts. He's banned a Telegram. Oof. He's tried to, and this is something else too, tried to before X, tried to bully Rumble into removing accounts. Okay, Rumble, where you're likely watching right now, said you have to remove these accounts. And Rumble said, uh, no, we're not going to do that. So if the consequence is Rumble is no longer available in Brazil until we sort this out, that's what we're going to do. Rumble is not in the business of removing accounts if they are not breaking the law. And that's important. That's important. I'm glad that we have people like Rumble there, and now we also have X. Um, we also uh, have video of Marias admitting that he's a bad guy. You're just giving up? I'm the bad guy. I don't save the day. I don't fly off into the sunset, and I don't get the girl. Marias also <laughs> has, so you have X, you have Rumble. You have going after a magazine when you're now basically in charge of a new court. A new court that, uh, I don't know, handles elections that a lot of people think was corrupt. And if those people complained that it was corrupt, they were accused of rioting. I don't know if you see those parallels there. He has also personally ordered, uh, I would say, witch hunt, political prosecution of our next guest, journalist Paulo Figueiredo. Uh, this man has had his passport revoked. He's had his bank accounts frozen. He's had his social media censored. All of this for simply having a point of view that is deemed unacceptable uh, in Brazil. So please, let's welcome our, uh, our new friend here. I hope we have him on the line. I know we're uh, making this call internationally. Uh, Mr. Paulo Figueiredo. <laughs> Mr. Figueiredo, can you see me, hear me, sir? I can hear you and, and see you perfectly. If, I, if this call was international and I, uh, I was in Brazil, I would be in jail. I'm in South Florida. So this is a domestic call. <laughs> well, I apologize. I wanted it to seem more international because it makes us seem more cultured. Uh, but you, you still have an accent, so that's nice. It's not as severe as a lot of Brazilians. How did, how did that happen? Uh, I went to school here. Um, I study here in uh, several schools. So, and I've been here for 10 years. Otherwise, again, I would be in prison. Yes, I can imagine. That seems to be the rule there uh, in Brazil. A couple of questions before I ask you about uh, some of these details. What does uh, eso mean in Brazil? In jiu-jitsu, they would go, eso. It means, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And it, uh, and it should it should come to train jujitsu here in South Florida. The Valenti brothers, you, they, they they watch you, so okay. it should come here. And then what is a does is aye? They would say if someone gets it, they would go aye. What does that mean? It means again. That's good. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then what means you can't do that? That's chich poha. Yeah, that's a bad word. Is it a bad word? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, shit. It's like don't do that aye. shit. Don't take shit on my show. Don't they have children who watch, okay? <laughs> Maybe in Brazil, Carnival with butch and boob. It's okay. No here. We don't do here. Okay. Poha. <laughs> yes, that's exact. <laughs> Poha means something else. Oh, okay. it's, it's, the translation is shit, but the technical term would be sperm. Okay. Oh, that means whoa! <laughs> Wait, sperm? Like never shut the two meat. Right, just never shut the. Wait, sperm? Like to spurn somebody, or did you say sperm as in uh, ej ej ejaculate? No, the, the actual ejaculation fluid. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's what poha means. But in, in Rio, where I'm from, I'm from Rio, Brazil. That's where jujitsu is, is. It became popular. 
uh, and poha is is like we say poha like Americans say the f word after after every sentence. Oh, so it, <laughs> yeah. Good. That's not how. That's not how we cuss. We don't say the f word after every sentence. The fuck we don't. Uh, I've seen it before. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. We talk about sperm. Does that was compliments means just many of you and only take one to get victory. So that's <laughs> poor high. It's compliments to me. Um, what is? Let me go through this. What's your specific relationship with? Uh, well, before I do that, where's the best place for people to find you and support you right now? Is it, since you're stateside, is it Rumble? The La Quinta Inn. In yeah, I'm still on. I'm on Rumble. Uh, I have a Rumble channel. My shows in Portuguese on Rumble, but the U.S. audience can follow me on X at Rio P Figueiredo, which is my last name. I know it's hard to, to yes. follow. But that's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, at Rio P Figueiredo, I'm on on X, and I most of my posts are in English. So they can follow me there. The, my Rumble channel is still in Portuguese, although Rum, Rumble, as you properly said, is is ba not banned in Brazil. They decided to not comply to the rules, the crazy orders by Alexander de Moraes. And so they closed Rumble and Locals, by the way, as well. Uh, both both are closed to Brazilian audience. If you're accessing the Brazilian IP. I wanted to ask you, how do you how do you what are your thoughts on that? Because I know that obviously that's a significant portion of, of your business, how you make a living. Um, but I would imagine that on, on moral grounds, uh, you're supportive of them, you know, rebelling against the Brazilian government. But what's your overall feeling on that that Brazilian fans can't watch you unless they maybe have a VPN? Well, it hurt me tremendously, uh, but I, I actually uh, talk to them uh, they, they were cursors enough to to let me know what they were going to do and i i fully support it uh because like elon musk said moral uh, principles mean uh, are more important than profit and 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 that was the basis all this started when i i tweeted to elon musk saying well you're saying all these rules are illegal so why comply locals and rumble didn't and right. that's when he said he was going to lift the, all the sanctions in Brazil. So I fully support it, although uh, I, I think it's, of course, it hurts my business, right? Yeah, I, and, I know, and I'm sorry to hear that. You know, may, hey, maybe there's a way that uh, Mug Club and what you're doing, uh, Mr. Figueredo, can pair. We can put a poll out there. Uh, we probably could use some some uh, Brazilian Portuguese people coming on over, giving them access to uh, to more content. Let me, let me ask you this. What is your specific relationship with Justice uh, Moraes, because he is at the center of a lot of this, and the more I was doing research, it kept coming back to the same person. Well, he is the de facto dictator of Brazil, so um, I don't have a relationship with him other than I was a journalist on the mainstream media, okay? I was on, on primetime. I uh, used to have the sometimes more viewers than Fox News on primetime in the U.S. Mm. It's like I'm talking about millions of people watching every day on TV, regular cable TV, cable news TV. The the show that I was uh, on was considered the number one political show in the country for a long time. So, and one day uh, on December 30th, uh, 2022, so after the after Lula's election, uh, I, I woke up with the order of... Um, cancellation of my Brazilian passport, which was unheard of, um, the ban of all my social media in Brazil. You can access my social media if you're not in Brazil or if you're using a VPN, not in Brazil. Uh, my YouTube channel had a, like 1 million people, over 1 million people uh, there. Uh, my Twitter account, uh, 1.4 million people, just to give you an idea, and all other platforms. And one day I woke with everything blocked, and plus all my assets in Brazil, all my assets and bank accounts were frozen. Plus he issued a fine every time I I, I stated any fake news, uh, which I, I think, I believe I've never did in my life, but right. depends on what you think right. fake news are. So that's that's my relationship with him, and I have been like that for a, a year and a half now. Well, and let me ask you this, because you said de facto dictator, Moraes. Now, he's a Supreme Court judge, so the president there, former criminal, until the Supreme Court said, ah, we're not going to do that anymore, uh, Lula. Um, what's the relationship then between Moraes and, and Lula? It sounds to me like you're saying he might be in a greater position of control than the president. Hmm. Oh, he definitely is, uh, and and – it's not me saying that, right? Elon Musk said that uh, he pretty much controls Lula. And it's interesting because uh, a few months ago, the Lula's party uh, uh, supported a bill in, in the U.S., in, in Brazilian Senate, saying that uh, giving some limitations to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court justices went nut, and they started uh, sending messages, WhatsApp messages, to journalists on mainstream media saying, look, we 
we allow this him to go back to power. So he was like, he can't he can't turn against us. We defend the democracy. We guarantee his election. So he they brag about it. <laughs> they brag about the fact that they brought him to power. So it's and if you look at the Twitter files, Brazil, which they were released last week, yep. it's undeniable that Demorais played a key role censoring conservative conservatives and therefore favoring Lula's election. Because, and even when was, when I was on TV, uh, I used to get orders from the court saying, "You can't say this. You can't say that. You can't say that." Like. And this is unheard of. Right. I couldn't say that Lula was unconvicted because this is this is a little. It's, it was just us being smart asses in a sense sure. uh, because he was convicted and then he was not find, found not guilty. He was right. unconvicted by the court. Right. I couldn't say he was an ally of uh, Venezuelan uh, dictatorship. Uh, I couldn't say he was an ally of the Nica- uh, Nicaragua uh, dictator. So I couldn't say stuff like that on air by court orders. Wow. And we saw that that was happening in an even broader scale on all social media. Twitter was the one that we have access to the files, but it was happening on all social media. Can I ask you something? Because you um, you were uh, on, on television for a very long time. That means you were obviously broadcasting when Bolsonaro was in office. Um, and you've talked about these orders coming straight to you. Any of them ever come from Bolsonaro, the supposed fascist, saying you can't say that if you were critical of him or any of his colleagues ever? No, I actually uh, used to criticize Bolsonaro a lot. A lot of my viewers didn't like it, but I think it's part of my job. But I tried to be fair with him, which is uh, unique in the mainstream media. Like here in the U.S., you can criticize Donald Trump, but you don't need to lie about it. And uh, but the other journalists, I mean, the mainstream media in Brazil is not just as bad as in the U.S. It's way worse than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So and the amount of lies they spread against Bolsonaro is unbelievable. And most of them were prove, were proven fake news, right? F- uh, like f- false uh, yes. uh, throughout the time. And Bolsonaro never did anything to them. It's just like to the point that some people said he deserved to die, just like we saw in the U.S. with Trump, the same thing in Brazil. We had mainstream newspapers with a, like a column saying, well, Bo- I wish Bolsonaro was dead and stuff like that. And nothing happened to Jesus. no one. Right. And, and to be fair, and I have to be absolutely, I've been in this game for a long time, and I've been in this game before Bolsonaro and during the first uh, the first run of the Workers' Party, the Socialist Party, Lula and Dilma, in power. And I criticized them heavily without fear. And right. now in Brazil, everyone is terrify i mean members of congress whatever is left on the press even the the more moderate uh, leftist journalists they're terrified yeah. of criticizing uh demorize not lula we can criticize lula we cannot criticize demorize or the supreme court that's called an attack on the institutions an attack on democracy and uh spreading misinformation and therefore although there's nothing on the brazilian law against that uh they they can throw you in prison and they have yeah. Well, it's really scary. I mean, it, you know, in South America, sort of, you know, coups happen all the time. It's just kind of pick a country and pick a span of five years. It doesn't matter if you're going to go Colombia this year, you're going to go Chile, you're going to go uh, Bolsonaro, you're going to go Brazil, or is what they would try and say. I know you guys had one in the 1960s, I believe, and I know there were sort of semi-coups since then. Um, that happens quite a bit. And Brazil is an interesting place because it seemed like it was going one direction. And like I said, I, I know a lot of Brazilians. Every single one of them was a very big Bolsonaro supporter. I knew one who wasn't, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, you may know him, was a a, a journalist. And I would be curious to see his thoughts now because I asked him about Lula. I didn't ask him about uh, Marias. Um, Let me ask you this, how does one, because there are 11 justices, right? If I'm not mistaken, they're on your Supreme Court in Brazil? There are 11. Correct. How does one person, one single justice, I mean, this is the reason that your passport was revoked. This is the reason that your bank accounts were frozen, that your social media, that you were deplatformed. This is the person involved with the Twitter files, right? It, it all goes back to Mariah's. How does one, going after that magazine, how does one justice, when there are 11, have that kind of unilateral power to get accounts removed and entire platforms? Well, he has a lot of support. And j- just so you know, it's very rare to see a jiu-jitsu practitioner that's leftist. That's very rare. It's, it's very rare. <laughs> 
Yes. It's very rare. But you know why? Uh, because they're individuals. I know it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They it's, live in personal strength and solving things. And it's, 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 uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, but um, that said, Morais has a lot of support and he has support, global support. I mean, really global support. And uh, to the fact that the United States directly interfered on Brazilian elections. And this is not a conspiracy theories, uh, theory. That's on mainstream media that Joe Biden sent uh, the Secretary of Defense, the Director of CIA, the Advisor for International Affairs to Brazil to exert pressure on public officials, uh, including generals, including uh, uh, politicians, including bureaucrats, to not contest the electoral results uh, if, if Lula won. So, and, and Biden was the first one to uh, to recognize Lula immediately after he won the election. Right. And, 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 that, and that's direct interference. And mm-hmm. we, we have reports on the, of that on, on mainstream media. It, it puzzles me. Actually, it doesn't, but I'll pretend it does. Yeah. That it puzzles me why, <laughs> why, why the Department of State is supporting a guy that's very anti-American. Because all Lula's policy was very, they, they were very anti-American. Sure. Uh, Lula is pro-Hamas. Lula is pro uh, pro China like crazy. Mm-hmm. He is pro Iran. Uh, we're, we've been docking Iranian warships in the Brazilian ports. He's pro Venezuela. He's pro pro the drug cartels in South America. He's like he's undermining the dollars on the BRICS. He's trying to make the the yuan uh, the the international currency for trade. It's like why? The do the Biden administration support that? It's almost like they hate America. Yes, it's almost, it's almost like it's the same party of people <laughs> who supported Chavez. Yeah, you know, it's almost <laughs> like it defies reason. Yeah, Nick, and, you have a question. And he said, if I'm following this right, Lula is is, is sort of uh, he's sort of behind the scenes controlling Marias. Mar- Marias is the one behind the scenes. He's a Supreme Court uh, justice. Oh, okay. Lula is the president. It was sort of the same dynamic. I thought is yeah. Biden being controlled by yeah by the no. So, so Lula and his allies. They appointed yeah. so the Moraes was appointed by the vice president of Dilma Rousseff, which was the successor of Lula of Lula's party. Party, uh, the vice president Lula, Dilma was impeached for uh, fraud, defrauding public accounts, so she was impeached. And then this guy Temer, which was more of a centrist guy, he took office, and then he appointed uh, Moraes. Uh, so if uh. you take of the out of eleven, uh, nine were appointed by the left. Right in Brazil, wow. Wow. so and that's and that's that's why they can do whatever they want. Poor. And but they have a lot of support. They Poor have ha. support from oh. the globalist. Poha, he did. He <laughs> said it wrong. Yeah, I'm in, the- it's, in English you say with an H. Yeah, like Poha. I'm from but Boston. I, I'm from Boston. I couldn't get that word right in a million years. No, that's that's right. You, he's you're from South South <laughs> Boston. It's, it's okay. Later it's we like hold. A Kennedy Poha. We're gonna hold together with the brothers Valanche. So um. <laughs> It's just, it is rare, by the way, like you talk about too, with jujitsu guys. That's kind of the community. I think that's why we have a significant viewership in Brazil. We're going to start translating um, some of our content to Portuguese um, because, uh, you know, obviously appearing on Joe Rogan and, and being involved to some degree in the, the mixed martial arts community, it's a very, uh, it's a very strong sort of rugged individualist community. Uh, and um, I, I, I see a real populist groundswell or have been for a while there with, with Bolsonaro and it's it, it was it was very surprising to me to see this shift, and it just made me very aware that it seems like it's a shift in spite of public sentiment, not as a pro- byproduct of it. And I see a lot of the similarities, you know, with what they, they they've done. They just accuse Bolsonaro and people on the right of being exactly what they are. They accuse him of being a fascist while they silence journalists and try and get people removed. They accuse him of not going, not being willing to relinquish power while they effectively appoint a shadow government, right? That's what they've done here in the United States. They've said Donald Trump is a fascist. Donald, well, fascists don't typically lower your taxes and give you more access to firearms if you're a law-abiding citizen. But or they, arrest your political opponents. Right. Ex- well, exactly. That's what we see. Marias exactly guy is a black belt in corruption is what he's got. That's exactly what he is. Uh, a lot of similarities. And yeah, I think a big reason that they would all hate America is because the idea of America would be the safeguards, checks and balances to, to act as a stand against corruption. 
And uh, of course, they want to destroy those checks and balances while demanding that people recognize and uh, respect the institutions that they falsely prop up. Education, they want to pack the court. Um, let me ask you this, because I want to continue uh, on Mug Club, which is, of course, powered by locals. Uh, let, you know what? Let's do that. Let's. You guys follow on X, Real P Figurato. You can go and uh, follow him. Uh, what's what's your URL for, for for locals and Rumble? And we'll continue this on Mug Club. Uh, it's it's um, pfigueredo.locals.com and uh, Paulo Figueredo, my name is on my channel on Rumble. And people can support me on Locals if they think it's it's worth as well. Absolutely. My locals, the locals are still honoring everything. They're still uh, sending all the supports. Just the Brazilians can't access the, uh, through the website. They can still do it through the app, though. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still there. I'm still posting on Locals. I know. But you know uh, what? Look, I appreciate you taking the risk because I, I know. I know that you take a hit and standing there saying, yeah, but morally – um, this is something that we have to do. It's we, we've got to be taking a stand now. Rumble could have just removed you and a few Brazilian creators, right? They had that option. Uh, either way, you're kind of up shit creek. I'm sorry, but uh, they decided to say no. We're not going to comply, and hopefully, we see more people emboldened, uh, like we see with Elon Musk and X. Stay right there, Mr. Figueredo. Also, if you search uh, Paula, sorry. Paulo, I knew a Paula, but it's a very common name. There's Paulo, the Paula, I get it. I know so many Silvas, and I know so many Paulos or Paolas. It's like John over there. We'll make sure your URL is in the description. Let's continue with Mr. Figueredo on Mug Club. If you're watching on Rumble, you can click, join right there, continue watching. Uh, and uh, YouTube, I don't know if we're still there today. Probably shouldn't be. Piss off. <laughs> Jeez, you can fit back in your f***ing wedding dress.